Peter has been around for a while, uh, since when cars had fins, uh, and has done some things, uh, many of them in the field of education. They've gathered 40 years of teaching experience in business and in K-12 public and alternative schools as director of educational services at Next Computer, uh, has been a middle school teacher, a science coordinator and lead staff developer, an education professor teaching undergraduate and graduate level education courses, and has been a principal and lead teacher at the farm school in Summertown, Tennessee. Peter is currently co-founder and teacher at Hilltop Education Connections uh, and coordinator of the Deep Adaptation Forum DAF Education Group. Peter is happiest when they are in the forest and their job, learning with kids out in the forest, fills them with joy. With that, I'm going to pass things over to Peter. Hey, y'all. Uh, I am so, so, so grateful to be here with y'all. I really kind of feel like um, I have been a solar punk for a long time without knowing it. I discovered it recently. Um, and I, you know, I'm just amazed that I get this chance um, to talk with y'all. Um, I'm also slightly terrified because as I mentioned, and as Kes mentioned, I'm used to sort of hanging out in the woods with four kids, eight kids. We sit around in circle, we talk. Um, we wander the woods, things come up and we talk more. And this is a very different medium. And because one of the big themes of my talk is gonna be that education should always be a conversation. I, uh, I just couldn't get myself to do a 30 minute lecture on um, why education should be a conversation. So I'm going to try to make this as much of a conversation as I can with the technology available and um, and we'll see how it goes. So uh, the first thing I would like to do is I've done my check in. I've told you a little bit of how. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I've told you a little bit about how I'm feeling. Um, I would love to hear from you all in the chat. I think the numbers that we have here prohibit our, our, us from sort of walking around the circle. So my first question to you all is, how are you feeling in this moment? And I'm going to watch for your responses in the chat. And everyone else can also check in with how everyone else is feeling. A few moments later. Nice. One of the things I'm noticing is um, mixed feelings. And I tend to talk with the kids about, isn't it interesting to note that you can feel a lot of things at the same time? Also, since we are, um, you know, I'm trying to share sort of how I do this process while I do this process, I want to share my activity plan with you all for the day. Um, so these are this is sort of the standard format I use when I'm hanging out with kids in the woods or teaching permaculture or talking about social justice or whatever, is I think of what are the big ideas I'm hoping to um, sort of wander through during the time I spend with the kids, which is typically about two hours. Um, and that's really my big guide. And then I also put down some activities um, that, uh are my idea of what i'm going to do for the day and there are lots of days where i throw my activity plan to the wind entirely um and there are other days where i usually write in my journal how shocking it is gee i actually did all of the th you know we ended up doing all of the things that i thought we might do um so what i'd like to do now is share that uh the link to that activity plan with you. And I, in if I was sitting in circle in my normal context, I just would tell people what I was thinking and ask them if that sounded good or what they're into. Um, given that we're in a little bit of a different context, I've shared the link with you. That file should be commentable and editable by all of you. And so what I'm requesting is comment in there. Um, if you see something that you have a question about, say you have a question about it. If there's something that you want to make sure I talk more about, mention that. If you think I've said something, you know, weird or off-putting, let me know that. I want, you know, any feedback that you have. All right. Um, also, folks know that my plan is to leave these slides up to sort of see this 30 minutes which will go by oh so fast as kind of the beginning of a conversation. 
I'll be leaving the Google Slides and this document up, and I hope that we'll continue to talk after today. One of the things I talk about a lot is that schools are often in a big hurry. Um, and I, my sort of summary statement is I want learning environments to feel way more like uh, playing in the forest than marching through a factory. Um, and I'm trying, I'm wrestling with myself because I have this got to move, got to move feeling right now. And I really want to kind of slow it down. Having that feeling left me to forget a bunch of things or two other things in my check-in. So um, the other question that I'd love for you all to respond to, I have two more questions I'd love for you to respond to in the chat. And they are um, something that you're grateful for in the moment. Um, I find, you know, with the kids, it's a super powerful kind of community setting context to get into that, okay, you know, I may be in a bad mood or the world may be, social systems may be collapsing around me and ecosystems may be in hor a horrible state, but, um, but there are many things we're still grateful for. So, um, and I love whoever just said their mom, um, that is a super common answer from kids and it provides me a wonderful opportunity to talk about the idea of viewing all of the natural world as our kin. I'm hoping I don't have a uh, massive thunderstorm because I am out on my porch. Uh, I could use one in half an hour. Um, and my last check-in question is, what brought you to this session? Um, you know, it could have been a good time to take a break, a longer break. There's another super interesting session that I wanted to go to and I couldn't because uh, I'm doing this one at the same time. So I'm curious, basically this in circle, if I was talking to kids, I'd be asking them, what are your requests of the group? Um, and so I'm trying to find out kind of what you're, what you're looking for to see to what, you know, what extent I can tailor. A few moments later. Yeah, so, you know, as you're probably getting, for me, um, one of the things I think about a lot is that uh, transforming our educational system is at least as much about how we teach as it is about what we teach. And I hate the word teach. Um, I like to use the way longer nurturing learning environments and communities or nurturing, nurturing ecological learning environments and communities. And you'll see why sometimes I slip back into that the cheap. Oh, interesting question. I'd like to know how you bridge interpersonal relationships with ecological connections in children's minds. Um, you know, I just got to give a short shot at that, at that question right now is that I make a point about talking about how ecosystems generally are a gift economy, how plants make sugar for themselves, but they share it with us and with organisms under the ground who then share nitrogen back with them and water and other resources. And I talk with them almost daily about how can we be more like that. Um, and then obviously modeling and, you know, and lots of other things. Okay. And I'm realizing that I am, uh, that we're like, halfway through my presentation, so I better, or our conversation, so I better show you these slides. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do now, and feel free to continue in the chat, but I'm going to change my focus to uh, overviewing the slides that I've prepared. Uh, you're all muted, and just so that you know, like I, one of the things that I tell um, the kids always is um, that, they can always, you know, any of us can always shout out if we see something interesting. So you'll find, you know, we're sitting in circle um, out in my yard that borders the National Forest, and I'll be in the middle of saying something, and some kid will go, look at that bird! And I'll go, oh my god, I used to do that when I was in public school, and I spent so much time in the principal's office, and I'm so happy to be providing a place for these kids where uh, where such shout outs are encouraged. So if you feel like shouting out at any time, please feel free. Um, okay, so the basic gist of my talk is that we as learning hosts or learning guides or whatever can make what I call transformative moves 
um, in terms of how we contribute to ecological, educational environments and communities. Um, and you'll see the word ecophilic, ecophilic folks um, who will transform our world. And I'll talk a little bit more in a minute. Um, and in fact, you'll see on the next slide sort of my uh, first word in the bad news category is ecophobic. Um, I have come to believe that it is our, uh, the, the global North's industrial culture that strives to separate from nature, dominate nature, colonize nature is at the root of racism, patriarchy, misogyny, queer phobic everything and anti sexuality in general because it's natural women are bad because they must be closer to nature because they have a moon cycle people who live on the land or people with darker skin are bad because they look like they're more connected to the earth or their strategies are more connected to the earth whether or not that's the case, um, as that question in the chat highlighted, by pointing out how different the ecological world is than this mass of bad stuff that makes up our bad news, um, is a very, very powerful teaching tool. Um, so there's some good news. Uh, I was worried a little bit that I might not be really a solar punk because I'm not all that optimistic and I've come to understand that that's sort of part of the part of the program. Um, what I'm not optimistic about is I'm not optimistic that capitalism is going to reform itself. I'm not optimistic that um, uh, um, you know that we're going to stop global climate change in its tracks. I am, however, optimistic. I think it is critical for us to act what Andrew talked about this morning as the synthesis between um, nature and human nature. What I like to talk about is the synthesis between um, natural patterns, ecosystem patterns, and factory patterns, that if we can do those things, that we can slow the fall, which will be good for our slow moving plant brethren. Um, we can prevent as many extinctions as possible. It's the best thing I can do, I think we can do for our physical and emotional well being. Um, as Kess mentioned, I coordinate the deep adaptation group, the uh, education group within the deep adaptation group. And folks ask me a lot about what do you do to take care of kids um emotions in the face of climate collapse and part of it is telling them the good story of how the nat the natural world works and and trying to give them that picture as much as possible um and i do think that that's good for our well-being um i i hope you like my dad joke um about unpaving a road to a sustainable future um perhaps that's possible i'm again not super optimistic but i hope so and if human beings are on the path to our own extinction um i'm getting old enough that i think about i that i want to you know not right now but in the future uh go out in style and um and with you know dignity and love in my heart and i think as human beings we ought to aim for that as well if that's that's how the coin gets tossed um, so why transformational ecological education as we face collapse? Well, um, you all know, you know, education is in our, in the culture of the global North, it is the most powerful status quo maintaining thing out there. And from my point of view, if we're going to survive as a species, we've got to trans, we have to transform our culture from ecophobic to ecophilic, uh, and education is the you know, the place to do it. Andrew mentioned it as one, and and I'm really happy that he's more broad-minded than I am. I've kind of focused on this one action. Um, so what is transformational ecological education? For me, as I mentioned, the key is uh, synthesizing patterns, processes, whatever you want to call them, of ecosystems with mechanical systems. Eco logic and mechanical logic are so different from each other. The worldview that we're all separate is so different from the worldview that we're all interdependent. 
this is the slide that I'm going to invite you guys to start at and play with as much as my chatter will make room for. Um, so what you see on this slide is, uh, I'm going to call it three columns, even though it's not exactly. Um, it just worked better with the slashes than as a table to get the stuff to fit on the page. So what's on the left side are things that I consider relational patterns that happen in the forest. Um, things are self-controlled. There is, you know, every being is out uh, trying to fulfill its own needs. The organization comes out of that. Um, beings are internally motivated. They don't sh go looking for food because somebody's giving them money um, or a reward. Uh, they're pursuing their own needs. Um, diversity it rules. Those of you who know anything about ecology or permaculture know that diversity is a problem in public schools. Um, it's one of the, it's a problem in a lot of social institutions because those institutions are constructed the way that they are. Diversity is what makes ecosystems work. Ecosystems are self-organized, they are responsive. Um, I learned that there are these two great words in Greek, karos, which is the, means time, but it's like time to hug my friend. Um, and chronos is time like scheduled time. And the uh, karos rules in the forest, chronos rules in the, um, in the factory. And I'm gonna uh, stop going down the list. I'm hoping that some of these things are relatively self-explanatory and they also point to pages that go into a, a little bit more detail. Um, the last two things I think are, partic are you know, very important. Um, the resources circulate in ecosystems. E resources flow top down in factory systems, authoritarian hierarchies, et cetera. And for me, one of the main roles of educators is as a resourcer. When I am out in the woods with kids, I do have access to some resources that they don't, and I try to share them with them. And some of those resources are ideas, but I also look for their ideas and what's lighting them up and try to help get them to move around. Um, so hopefully these things are, give you enough of a flavor. Um, the rest of the slides are all pointed at from the slides on this page. So what I'm gonna do now is stop the share, uh, share the hopefully right link for, um, uh for the slides and ask you guys to sort of graffiti up the slideshow so any you can follow those transformative moves in the last column are live links you should be able to follow them and go to a place that particularly calls to you if any of those um particular transformative moves do uh you also feel free to comment up any other part of the slideshow. And if you have any questions, I'm fine. I'd really like to hear some other voices. You can feel free to use the chat, but also if you have any technical questions or you want a clarification question, um, you know, feel please feel free to speak up. I've been hearing too much of my own. So I'm just going to jump in here um, and say that, you know, we're, yes. uh, you're almost at your, almost at your time. So it might be, I know, I'm sorry. It might be best if we take this conversation um, to the discord, if we sort of say, you know, like the, the documents out there, um, if you have any technical questions, get those out of the way um, and then, you know, reconvene um, with the changes you've made with all the, you know, conversation about it on the discord. But, Peter, do you have anything else to say? It's not to just like hard cut you off. Do you want to do you have anything you want to say to wrap up? It's fine. Um, let me just tell you quickly that the links at the bottom of the page, if you haven't read Braiding Sweetgrass, best book in the universe, please read it. Um, on the in the footer, there's a link. If you'd like to send me an email, please do. There's also a link to a Facebook group called Ecological Education. Please go check it out if you use the horrible Facebook and join that group so that you'll see things there more frequently. 
and I'm trying to remember what else I have at the bottom. Uh, and I have a bunch of ecological learning activities for any of you who do work with kids that I wrote during COVID for families um, that are kind of tuned in this direction. I'm turning them into a book called Field Trips for All of Us. Um, and I also wanted to share the Howden the Shawnee Thanksgiving address, which I have been indirectly given permission to share. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of writing that I've ever seen. When I read it, I become convinced that uh, modern science doesn't have a whole lot to add to the scientific understanding of at least that group of indigenous folk. And thank you guys so much for showing up. And I deeply apologize for not leaving you any time to talk. And I'll see you in the Discord, I hope.